Good evening, judges. Miss Shirley, Paul, Kylie, Mr. Peng, and Wilson. Thank you for coming. My name is Amrullah, and I'm the founder and CEO of Face Recall Asia. At Face Recall, we make offline ads smarter using facial recognition technology. This is Professor Mark Brackett. He's a world renowned scientist at Yale, and he specializes in emotional intelligence. In his daily work, he encounters children and he wants to find out what they're feeling at what point during the classroom. So he uses this thing called the mood meter, in which a child's emotion is ranged between the line of pleasantness and energy. But the child still has to manually fill it up. Similarly, advertisers want to get to know this data. Advertisers want to find out how many people are looking at your content, whether those people are engaged, and even the age and demographics. For online, you have all these beautiful dashboards. But in the offline world, in the out-of-home world, you don't know how many people are looking at the ads at the bus stop. How many people are actually looking at the booths that you have today? So with Face Recall, we actually solve that problem using our smart module. So what we have over there would be our mobile module. Um, but as we work alongside with our customers, we've actually managed to downsize to as small as this. Because that was the need for hardware integration. Can you put this in your pocket? Okay, it's my pocket is quite tight. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, before I start the live demo, this is actually what I did outside at the booth. So, we actually have the face record module deployed at booth 7. And what it does, it actually uses geolocation technology to know how many people are around that area per unit time. We also know within that line of sight, we use facial recognition to determine how many people are looking at the big TV screen that I have. How long are they looking? And also we know their emotions. So let me give you a dashboard that we did early on for one of our early customers. So every time, every time someone sees, um, if Shirley is to see the face record module, so that is those bits that we see, those are things that's happening outside. If Shirley is to look, it will actually activate as a point. So, early on when we found out, we thought, okay, you know, our customers would use Google Analytics as a platform. And then we realized, hey, maybe they have their enterprise software. And when we, we, I understood that, we had to put it behind an API and fit it into their data analytics. So, some of the, some of the current customers actually rely on our custom dashboard that we have for them. So this is the face records um, dashboard that some of you have seen outside. So for example, the booth outside, I could see that about 29.2% of people feel engaged. What does this mean? So we actually analyze their emotions and put it behind an, alg an algorithm. So 40% is not too bad. We are doing pretty okay. And when we realize, when I look at the age demographics, I am pretty um, much satisfied that I'm targeting perhaps the 25 to 24 crowd because they are really amazing people. And when you look at the data for, for the male and female, you realize that there are twice more males, guys, compared to females. I don't know whether it's, it's, it's something that has to do with this event or... yeah. So, when we realize that, when we work closely with our partners, we realize that a lot of things that facial recognition can capture, it also does not capture the things around. What if someone walks around the booth and doesn't even look at the thing? So with our partners, we also wanted to know how many people are around the area that doesn't look at the data. So we actually use mobile technology, we actually decode some of the signals that you have at your phone. So we look at your 3G signal, we look at your Wi-Fi signal. So these are some of the uh, mobile phones that are around the area, currently right now. And we also can look at the live dashboard that's happening on the right hand side, which shows the traffic count of what happened over there. So this is actually pretty cool for our early partners and customers to actually look at people um, walking through their, their ad sites, their, their out-of-home media sites. So let me go back to my slide. When you think about it, every retailer, every hotel, every advertiser, every school, or even your hospital, they want to know where their customers are. They want to know where they are, they want to know how they feel about certain things. And we found out that this is really important, and that's why I'm doing this. And when, when, when I started working with one of our early customers, the need to downsize to a small module and make it really cheap, and make it really accessible, was one of the things that we learned along the way. 
So for that, we actually make the smart module, the entire system, pay as you go. And one of the things we learned is that the face record smart module allows advertisers to run the campaigns on all this data. So we're actually doing data the way Amazon Web Services is doing their data center, the way Sandgrid is doing for their transactional email, and the way Twilio is doing for the telephony. We reduce upfront costs, we make it behind, we put it PI, and we make it pay as you go. Thank you. Have you validated this idea to the inventory owner? Because you try to measure the performance of the offline, right? And uh, as my knowledge, they try not to measure it because once it's going to performance spaces, people, uh, the advertiser will exactly know what kind of performance, all these things. And actually, the, the, the inventory owner will lose money. Have you validated this? And how are you going to convince the inventory owner to put your device on it? Because it will tell the truth. They are bluffing all the way. <laughs> so, so you are very right that inventory owners were the first people we approached. Actually, to be honest, I actually approached the brands and the media agencies thinking, hey, you know what, we have this brilliant idea, we can collect all this data. But then the media agencies wanted this. And the next question for them is, that, where can we put it? So they were the ones who actually linked me up to Clear Channel. And for that, within the last four months, we've been hard integrating our hardware within the system itself. And we realized when we did our testing, we looked at the data, um, some of the data, that there was why geolocation was so important. Because when you look at the data, we realized, oh, people were looking. But what about the people who are around? Clear Channel wants to know this data. That was why geolocation enables that to know people who walked around, who probably passed by TE at the peripheral vision, but didn't see. So um, that was our early customer, and yeah. So can you tell me the, uh, the pricing plan? Okay, so the pricing plan, it's one cent per second, ranges up to five cents per second, depending on the features that we have. Uh, I don't quite understand the uh, technology. How do you tell who, who's around? Is it through their cell phones? And, okay. and how do you, what signal do you get from the cell phone? So from the, from the cell phone, um, you can actually read a Wi-Fi um, that's emitting from every cell phone. Um, it may not be um, something that the public knows, but your cell phone always transmits this data. But we do more than that. Even if you turn off your Wi-Fi, we are still able to read your 3G signals and your LTE signals as available. So we know you're there, but we can't point it to exactly where you're there unless we have two of these devices and doing a triangulation. Are these UIDs? Sorry? Are these unique IDs or are these just... These are unique IDs. Yeah, I mean, I think the telecom companies they can actually triangulate in the base on a billboard how many cell phones are within that area. Um, but I mean, that's more that's more, I guess, an equivalent to page views in the online space. Where I think with your camera, that's more going to be like clicks. Let's just say people that view. Um, so, have you tested this at all with any brand? I mean, I can definitely imagine. Yeah. You know, the, the, the FMCGs, right? They want to know how many people are actually buying their products and what type of people are buying so, their products. So one of the early things, if you guys remember the dashboard, the one on the bottom right hand corner where we show traffic count. One of the early brands that we worked with was Burger King. They're a fast food chain and they had to move really fast against their competitors. So they want to know whether if they send out their breakfast um, advertisements, are they working, are people going to the chains around this area or around this area? So that was one of our early um, brands that we worked with. Board and your technology, how do you know people is actually looking? Do you look for the at the retina? You know, I mean, sometimes people just walk past. So, do you, so do you consider that as you know, someone has already seen the advertisement? Mm. Or if I'm sitting on a bus and I saw this billboard, you know, how do you capture that? Actually, I, I'm a, I actually observed that, you know, I, I saw the advertisement, but you probably cannot capture that. So, so what technology, you know? So, when you say retina, it reminds me of Minority Report. <laughs> Because they all, yeah, there was some scene where they scan people. But for us, uh, we made it very simple. And when you look at it, uh, depending on what the media agency wants or what the media owner wants, if it's three seconds that's counted as an impression, then we'll take that three second point and then that will start counting. Yeah, so that would be uh, answering question number one. For the bus stop thing, I have to concede that certain windows, there's a glare. 
So it's very difficult to pierce through whether you're looking or not. But with the geolocation technology, I will know that you've passed with your mobile phone if it's on. Yeah. So uh, have you thought about or uh, talked to people about what the privacy, I guess this is from my previous question, what the privacy concerns are, right? Uh, you know, you might say to people, I, I, I'm not going to take a picture of your face, but so long as you're looking at people's faces, you know, are there concerns around privacy? So I'm a huge privacy advocate. Uh, it's quite ironical though. But, so here's the thing. When we sat down with Clear Channel, several things had to go through. One was LTE approval. So basically LTE sent us, hey, these are the list of things that has to comply. So we had, three of us, had to eventually sit and look through some of the system that has to, be, has to keep in place and make sure each and every one of them complies. If you think about it, having that regulation in place is actually making us better. Because we learn some of the system that has had that to be within the face report module that makes it protect the consumers, people who are passing through the public. So we have three layers of protection for that. You know, there have been a pretty big companies uh, built like Yieldwood Brown, you know, say for example, retail analytics to come on the receipts from all the Tesco's, Carrefour's, and so and so forth. Or maybe certain trade uh, research, Nielsen and TV ratings, the set top boxes of TVs. You know, so historically, I see an opportunity there. So I don't know how it connects if uh, whether or not you're Nielsen, you work with Nielsen to create like an outdoor whatever index. I, I don't know, right? But it's like to set up the business model in that way, then you charge people for buying that report and deeper versions of the report of this centralized report as one option. So I just wanted to share that because I think that could be something that you could Thank you. Um, um, and maybe one comment. Um, it was very funny when I sat down with uh, the customer, uh, the, basically the guy who was saying, hey, you know, traditionally we've been relying on all this nail data from Nielsen and all that stuff. Um, and I asked, how do they do it? And they, they actually told me, they actually had a diary. They go around and they just take down and see how many people are looking at certain things. So when I told them, hey, this is going to be real time. You guys are able to look at something and perhaps change if something's not working. And that got that excited. That, 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 that was a critical point for us. Yeah, so I, I guess the point is that like, while well, you solve it for customers of this is building like a nuisance like system, you know, and, and, and build something for the entire industry, you could build a much bigger business faster, potentially. Alright, thanks Harry. Thank you, Amarula. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.